Hello, everyone out there in the candy sphere. It's right. That's Rattly Joe here playing his favorite candy wrapper. He loves it. He just toodles it through the entire intro. Is that a Reese's? It's a Reese's. Did you say Reese's? I say Reese's. Oh, God, no. I say no, Reese's. No. Like You're a fucked up. Yeah, it's I know. Reese's. Reese's Pieces. See, that's, that's at least understandable to an extent. Is it? But if you just say, if you say Reese's on its own, that's inappropriate. <laughs> uh, joining me this week, as you've already heard, the curmudgeon himself, Ian Gibson, is here. And joining us, Hi. thankfully, this week, Kyle Bailey. Hello. He's here. Where's Mochi? Uh, he's playing with the bottle cap for my Stewart's Diet Root Beer. Oh. <sighs> I was admiring your stewards in the pre-show mm. um, as someone who doesn't get to drink soda that very often. Um, it's I, it's I, not that I don't get to. I don't drink soda very often. Yeah, I, I have switched over to mainly water, and I, they had a four-pack of these at ShopRite for really cheap, and I was like, why not? It's always oh, yeah. better in a glass bottle. Always better. Like when I see Mexican Coke, I'm like, oh, I could just have one. Yeah. Or the... <laughs> I don't like oh, it spicy. <laughs> Doritos. Yaritos? How do you pronounce that? Those I like too. The like Mexican sodas. They're very good. One time uh, I had um Mex I had Mexican Budweiser. I don't know if it's actually Mexican, it's just I was in Texas. It's Budweiser. <laughs> it was like clearly like marketed to like Latinos and I was like, okay. Also I was buying it from a gas station at like ten o'clock at night and I was like, hell yeah. And it was just it was Budweiser with 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 tomato juice and something that makes it a little bit spicy and it was not good <laughs> <laughs> that sounds disgusting i don't want any yeah. hi mochi he's knocking over water bottles so oh poor guy um folks we're here to talk about video games um and the sort as well as video game news um this is the section where we talk about what we've been playing and i'm not going to talk about what i've been playing i'm gonna sing no um it's just deep rock galactic i've been playing and then cleaning up pollen and can i can can i ask a question um yeah what's what's you keep mentioning the new update in 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 drg what's what's new as somebody who hasn't played it in like a year and a half what's new the new update, so it came out on PC. Consoles is two weeks behind. Um, I believe that is only because they can handle a launch and bug fixes on one system at a time, uh, which mm -hmm. for such a small studio makes sense. Um, so the new, it's it's not really a new update. It's more, it's the new season. Seasonal content is coming out. So it's Plague something. I can't remember what it is. So there's a uh, whole new... Uh, things that can appear in missions. These meteors can crash down. There's all these plague viruses stuff. There's a new slew of throwable weapons. So every time uh -huh. they do a season, they add like a new slew of, or, of weapons. What are you laughing at? I don't pay attention to you when you talk, so you keep going. But you wanted to learn. I, no, I just wanted to encourage discussion. <laughs> You're the worst. <laughs> Hold up a card that says Vamp. <laughs> Deep Rock Galactic is a fantastic video game, and everyone should play it. Uh, it's very fun and very good, and there's tons I was, of content I was, inside of it. I was thinking about this the other day, and that is, it's one of those games, I don't know what to call this. It's one of those things where I should like it, there is nothing wrong with it, and I want to like it, but it just ain't doing it for me, you know? And that's that's a shame. Yeah. It is. Uh, moving on. Uh, so I've been playing too much this week. I have been dabbling in a lot of things around the video game sphere this week. Uh, with the... Don't look at me like that. With the um, setup of my resin printer that I officially set up Ooh. yesterday. Um, got that working. Printed the test print, which was great. Came out awesome. Um, I have decided that the more the ease of water washable resins does not outweigh the fact that you still need all the equipment if it wasn't water washable resin 
Um, so I'm probably going to stick with the non-water washable and just use IPA. Anyways, uh, so I went to print today, and of course, my very first print out the, out the gate fails. Um, but I think I just missed a setting. I tried a second time, but that one also failed, because I think you're supposed to clean it between failures, and I didn't, hoping it would still work. Uh, so I have half of a figure from the Deep Rock Galactic board game uh, mm-hmm. just kind of sitting there, um, which uh, is cool. So I, I've been dabbling that with a little bit more. I actually have a space now where I can uh, put all that stuff and it's not too smelly inside the house. Um, so expect to see a lot more minis uh, on these shows because it'll cool. be fun to print those out. Um, I um I normally don't support... Uh, big companies coming in and like creating products in an existing space that cost 4x for no reason just to slap a label on it but 3d printing space and like the rumors of like apple doing a mainstream 3d printer there desperately needs to be a mainstream 3d printer that just fucking works because yeah, totally yeah. you have to fiddle with it so fucking much and it's it's horrible. Anybody who's like, oh, it's great. They're so easy. It's like, shut the mm. fuck up. No, 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 no. No, they're not. You got to fiddle with it constantly. Yeah. It's like it's somewhere between. It's like the complexity of model making with the on top <laughs> pressure that you have to fix everything all the time. Like, like you're, gl- you always, like if model making was, you always had to make the paint and glue before you were able to start building the model is what yeah. 3d printing is like. Um, it, it's just like, it's I, like the, the, the analogy I think of is it's like a paper printer, but 10% of your prints fail. And a hundred percent of the time before every print, you have to open the printer up and recalibrate it. Yeah. Yep. It's just, uh, man. The 3D, the resin seems like it's a little less uh, calibration heavy. Like, the yeah. things you do are kind of the same, but you don't have to fiddle as much, which is nice. Um, but yeah, it's it's it, it's wild. So I'm excited about yeah. that. That's kind of what I spent my week doing, is putting that all together, getting an area out back ready for it. I actually ordered an extension cable so I can throw power out there without having to leave my door open. Um so yeah, it'll be fun. Uh, I had to order a giant thing of isopropyl alcohol from Amazon. I was like, does someone think I'm like going to kill someone or am I drinking these gallons of alcohol? Uh, it's the only thing that gets me going anymore. Uh, and then the only other thing, uh, l- today Luigi's Mansion for the GameCube showed up, uh, which is what I want to play. Uh, I s- tried to start playing it on my Steam Deck. Uh and it did not run very well. And I talked about that last week with Dolphin. Oh. So I was like, oh, let me just buy it off of uh, eBay. And it was, I tried to get it on Goodwill. And the Goodwill, Shop Goodwill price went past the eBay price. So I went, I'll buy it on eBay then. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, uh, yeah. So those are the games. Just to say, Shop Goodwill, you got to be careful of that shipping. Because you'll be like, I'll buy a game. And then it's eight bucks for shipping. And you're just like, fuck you, man. Yeah. I bought. Um, some trading cards off shop goodwill i was like oh sweet 10 bucks and it was 12 dollars shipping and i was like oh crap so i paid yeah, 22 bucks get cards I don't really great want. website great website but they'll get great you. website yeah uh ian you want to tell me about the game you've been playing yes um my life has been very stressful for like the past year uh but but last week was was stressful and so saturday rolls around and i was like you know what i actually got some time to not do anything today and so i like woke up late and then i was just like you know let me just let me play a game and i was like i played a little bit of pressure washer simulator and i was like yeah this game's okay like you know it's it's good it's a good time waster but it's not really scratching an itch for me and i was like maybe i should maybe i should play some fire emblem sacred stones and i put it on my 3ds and i was like eh, not right now i'll come back to it eventually uh and then i was like maybe i should play that immortality on the xbox and i was like yeah i don't feel like playing that right now and then i was just like you know what dyson sphere program which is basically 3d factorio is out on Game Pass now, and uh, I looked it up. I haven't played it since it first came out in early access a year and a half ago, and it's still in early access, but they've added a lot of stuff and tweaked it a bit. And I was like, yeah, let me just try this. And I 
I played it for seven hours straight on Saturday. Um, when I say straight, I mean, like I played it and then I would get up to get food and go to the bathroom and maybe for five minutes tops if Maggie needed me for something. And then I would come back to the PC and I just could not stop playing it. And the only reason I stopped playing it was because Maggie wanted to go out to dinner. And I was like, <laughs> uh, well, first I said no. And then I was like, OK, maybe I should maybe I should get away from this computer for now. So I started playing that on Saturday. I've got 20 hours so far, which isn't that crazy because I had some stuff going on. But like between Saturday and Sunday, I put like 15 hours into that game. Like it's it's 3D factorial, baby. It's crack cocaine. Like they they do a lot of stuff like factorio, um, but they do it really well in 3D. So you can stack stuff on top of each other. So like if you have a storage chest and you're like, I'm running out of room, like you can stack another storage chest on top of it. And then part of the upgrades is you can unlock how many times you can stack. So right now I'm at four. So I can have like four Ooh. storage chests. I got four factories on top of each other. Um, which is great because, you know, a lot of factorial was about like, like footprint, like you're running conveyor belts, different places and they take up space, et cetera. Um, or you like, you have factories and they're taking up space. So it's kind of slowly becomes like a space management game. Um, like literally like, like floor space management, but because you can go, you can go, uh, you can stack things that helps out a lot. Um, the other thing that really helps is in the, the big difference between this and factorio is not just the 3d, but also that there's planets. So you're on a planet. It's kind of like the little print style where you can like run around the planet. Um, but then you're in a solar system. So there's a sun, there's other planets and, th and they do a really good job of onboarding you because you're like first four hours, you're on your main planet. And then you hit this point where you're trying to get new tech and it's like, you need titanium. And you're like, there's no fucking titanium on this planet. And then you're like, Oh shit. And then you got to fly to a different planet set up like titanium mining over there and then for a while you're just doing like runs yourself where you run over and you grab titanium but then eventually you unlock these big i think they're called interplanetary uh logistics stations so they're like these big towers they almost look like a mushroom or an umbrella they're big towers you feed material in them and then has uh, 10 landing bays on the top for these shuttles so you set up like a Ooh. network so on the other planet, it's like I'm feeding it titanium and I think you could do up to five materials per station. So you're feeding that one titanium and then you're saying you're going to you're going to uh, system supply, which means any other any other uh, logistic station in the solar system that needs it, you're going to supply it. And then the other one is like I am demanding titanium. So when you have them set up right, I had like like 60 ships going back and forth constantly and they're just feeding each other. And then um, the whole thing about Dyson Sphere so a Dyson sphere is basically like a theoretical mega structure where you build a sphere around a sun and essentially harness 100% of a sun's of, of a, of a star's energy, basically not just with solar, but you know, literally everything coming off the sun you are harvesting because you're surrounding it. So the end game for the Dyson sphere program is that you literally build a sphere around your sun. I'm not there yet. Cause again, I'm only like 20 hours, but I am at the point where my main source of energy right now is solar sails, which are solar panels that float in orbit around the sun. Mm. And the way I did that was I have a system that builds solar sails and they hand them off to these cannons and I defined an orbit and the cannon just shoots these like solar panels into orbit around the sun so when i look at my sun i have like three thousand solar panels in orbit around it in just one orbital path and like they're little tiny dots but it's so cool because like it's there right it's not one of those things where it's just like oh you're getting energy from this like every time the sun rises i see in the background all these cannons shooting off more solar sails and every time i fly through the solar system i see this like ring of solar panels around it it's just a really cool game. Like I normally hate games that just clone another one, but I feel like Factorio is unique and there's not really anything else like it. So it's okay for another game to come in and say, Hey, we're going to be a lot like Factorio, but we're going to, we're going to significantly add to it and add some twists on top of it. And, um, I really appreciate that. The game is, it's crack cocaine. Um, I can't wait for it to like fully come out. Cause it feels very good right now. I, I'd be surprised how much more they add to it. Yeah, I the day they added it to Game Pass, I installed it because I had memories of you playing 
family sharing from the subpixel account back when and i could never because we got it. a review code yeah yeah and then um and then after you finished playing it you're like you can play it and i was like i don't want to now it's used so just keep now- it in your <laughs> keep it in your back pocket you've got some time or there's like or there's where you're like i should play a game but i don't know what to play just set aside like a week and just fucking binge that game because it's yeah. it's really really good yeah, I I have a couple games on that on the Game Pass app. The one of the ones I was going to stream on Tuesday, I was really excited to play, um, which is they put all those Frog Detective games into one game, and I've always heard oh. people talk about them pretty well. Uh, and I was like, oh, now's the time. What what uh, are those games? I have no idea. That's why I want to play them. But I just Wait, know is Fro- Frog Detective is not Frog Detective is different from Frog Fractions. Correct. But but is uh, it is it the same type of game as Frog Fractions where it's just weird stuff or is it a little bit more typical of whatever genre it is? I think it's more typical, but again, I I've only seen the screenshots of the frog. Um I have not played. Yeah. It. I yeah. will try to. Anyways, um, uh, um kids, I want to say uh kids, children, I want to say directly to you that I hate you. Uh, anyways, Ian, uh, I caught you playing Offworld Trading Colony Company. Yeah, I lasted about forty-five minutes. It's not terrible, but at the same time, I was like, "I'm, I'm this isn't what I feel like playing yeah. right now." It's a great tutorial that doesn't tell you what kind of game it is, and then when you start playing the game, you're like, "I don't want to play this type of it's, game." It's like it's like a business 4x, which is pretty interesting, and it's a lot about it, market manipulation, which is cool, but. I just wasn't into it but it's a business 4x in starcraft like starcraft speed and i don't want that oh it was that because i didn't get out of the tutorial i just right. did like the tutorial for like the tutorial minutes. does not explain that the actual game is like you gotta go like you are hitting hotkeys to uh, beat the other factions uh no. and is not what I i'm want. a turtler uh, my uh, my yeah. rts strategy is turtle yeah big turtle my rts and my pooping strategies turtle Kyle, what's your RTS strategy? Uh, I'm like medium. I try and go with the flow, see what the other enemies doing. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes turtling's the best strategy. Sometimes full on assault is the best. So, just depends. Okay. But I, yeah. I can you're, do either. You're versatile. You're very versatile. I'm verse. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're versed in uh, RTS games. RTS, Actually, yeah. the, before I let you speak more, Kyle, um, and I will let you speak when, when you're left. Um, no i just want to say it reminds me i need to try they are billions again because that's like a turtler's rts it it is but the problem i had with it is that it is too much of a traditional rts where it's like here is a tech tree you better put down the right way through this tech tree and you end up having to like micromanage your buildings a bit but not in a fun way and that so it's 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 not terrible it's just for me it was a little bit too much of the traditional RTS. Yeah, I just remember someone saying the story mode in that game was pretty good. So yeah, I remember like it ramps that, yeah. you up pretty well. Uh, anyways, Kyle, please tell me all about the games you've been playing. Sure. Uh, same as last time I was here, God of War. I'm really slowly making progress in that game. This week I got, I think maybe six or seven hours. Work has just been crazy, but it's been fun. Every time I've played it, I've liked it a little bit more. Um, the combat system is like it's it's way deeper than i originally thought because i've never played any of the other god of war games so um i was only now just introduced to his uh chain swords the this i, I don't oh, the, know what they're called um, um like chaos blades yeah the chaos blades um and those <laughs> i mean it's it's a completely different game with those and uh the leveling system is really interesting and uh it it's like got the sort of the best of everything i really like the story it's very emotional like i said before um hi are you gonna keep no you're not um it's been it's been a lot of fun uh the music bear mccurry uh did the the composition he's great um everything he does is gold except for rings of power which i didn't really care for but again the music was the best part of that um so i really like it i'm really interested to see how it ends and also i haven't watched anything for the the sequel so I'm also really interested to see what they do with that. Um, yeah. And then uh, moving on to the other game that I played and will watch was oh. Father's Day, uh, a lovely little horror game by Emika Games, um, who I did confirm they are Russian, which makes sense why the English translation was so rough. 
uh, it was a little confusing to follow the story at times, yeah. but it was creepy. Um, we we sort of plowed through it, and uh, we had a we had a good time on stream. On when was that? Tuesday, Monday, Sunday, I don't remember. Sunday, night. Sunday, something Sunday. like that. Yeah, and um, it was fun. I I definitely recommend it. it was, got your money's worth. A little creepy, and uh, randomly at the end, it like the game kind of switches uh what yeah. like like it just completely like 180 on like what it what it's been before which was, which was interesting it's about and, mothers uh, yeah yeah <laughs> it, actually it was about mothers which was crazy i, I it, was i was floored it was also nice because it was like it was a very niche ghost situation that ended up like schizophrenia um uh uh inception story time travel yeah that by the end of it, it was so self-contained that when I went to bed that night, I wasn't, not that I normally get super scared, but I wasn't like creeped out or anything. Cause I was like, oh, it was just in the game. Like none of that's real or, yeah. you know, it was weird. The, the way, the way the story was contained, it was like, it could only happen in this right. specific like, I wasn't, person. So yeah, yeah. it was, it, was, it yeah. wasn't like a story about someone breaking into someone's house and killing them, which could happen yeah. to me. It was just like such a like strain of the imagination, which was yeah, uh, neat. They, was, we did have fun. the one good idea from it, which was a movie about a movie based on the concept of incepting into criminals' minds a, a serial to killer. One team distracts the serial killer and suffers through their puzzles, while the other team is trying to find the evidence of what of the crimes they committed. It was, it was basically uh, like like seven plus. Or yeah, seven plus Mind Hunter plus Inception. Yeah, it I feel was like super weird. I feel like that. I feel like that. I feel like that's I'm an about, anime. <laughs> I feel like I'm ten percent, just ten percent of me that's like, I think that's been done before. It might, it might have know. been, but it, maybe it's a good idea. In the moment, it's we liked it. Idea. So yeah, we liked yeah. it. Anyways, um, well, that's it. Nice. Yeah, God of War yeah. two, uh, Ragnarok. I'm excited Getting for. Really good reviews, apparently. Yeah, and the thing I heard about it, which, like, someone was defending because people are idiots, was, like, they there's so much stuff left over from the first game and familiar environments and weapons and stuff, and they kind of mm. embrace that. So it's not, like, a brand new game that's just, like, a sequel to a, a, continuation. a really good game. It's a yeah. continuation. People are... It's like the person who was, like, they're using the same boat animation. It's, like, there's a reason... Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask are fantastic I remember that. games. <laughs> like, they, yeah, but they those released... games... Were like a year apart, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. This is this is not a year apart. This is much more. <laughs> no, I, I'm saying they're like retreading. They're like using your familiarity with the map to like add new things to it. Somebody, you know? somebody complained about that exact same thing with reusing animations in Horizon, and it's like, oh yeah, if, if she's doing the exact same thing, why do you need to redo it? Wait, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm going crazy here. It's the same map? No, I'm saying no. They're, they're... No, it's not the same map. It's built off of the same map because he lives in the same place. Like, I, okay. I kind of see what you're saying. <laughs> entitled gamers, etc. But at the same time, if you told me that, like, the multi-year, big-budget, triple-A sequel to God of War, God of War Ragnarok is reusing a lot of stuff, not as in just animations, but also like, oh, you're kind of in the same place and, and a lot of it's similar. No, I'd be no, like, no. this is more a like, sequel then. More like the next, like, then if you were playing a game, you finish it and the next game starts in the area you left off and, and then using you start that into a, a new off, area. Right? Like it's okay. that sort okay. of continuation. Yeah. Oh, because they're probably still doing the same one and shot. The and the whole thing with God of War is as the world snake moves, it reveals more stuff anyway. So it's mm. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. I'm not coming down hard right. It's just the way you described it. I was like, wait, all these things do sound bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I meant it more in like the Majora's Mask way where it's like you're familiar with all the characters who are in yeah. the play already. You don't have to work. Yeah. Like you start with the axe and blades of chaos. They didn't find some stupid way to take it away from you again. Yeah, they're not. Uh, you, I just like I just know that you fuckers are going to make me play this game for game of the year, even though I played four hours of the first one. I didn't really like it. I don't I don't have a PlayStation five or a PlayStation four, so I can't play it. So I got to I got to go either get one or wait till it comes out on PC, which will be six months from now. 
apparently the PS4 version, uh, it runs OK, but the console just sc literally screams the whole time. <laughs> I can imagine. I d made a comparison video to a jet engine today, so I <laughs> did. You know, maybe that, that might have been the one that I that I kept seeing. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. Um, sorry, I realized I host this show. Um, yeah, you heard it here, folks. God of War 2 is just a cheap rip off of one. Uh, moving on, it's time for the news, which means I gotta hit the news theme. Uh, which means I gotta hit this button right here. Here's the news, it's gaming news. We're talking about news. What's up, news? But now there's more to the song, so you can sing along, and it won't bore you though, unlike Factorio. Kingdom Hearts was played by Ian, and he really loved Pirates of the Caribbean. But we don't want to have a vocal spat, so let's bring it back to your local oh, chat. Oh my god. Every more times. Every now and then, I remember the fucking fever dream that was my first Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> god. I only have to hear that song three more times did you pay somebody on fiverr to remix it honestly i think that's the best idea nope i am picking a backing track and whoever wants to make it can make it i'll do it i'll go to fiverr and i'll just pay somebody no the person to has to make it. it no no paying i peasants. think it's funnier if i literally go hey what's your bare minimum to spend 10 minutes remixing this and then just whatever comes out is the new hey thing. um i can't even think of it. daft punk i need you quickly <laughs> not anymore plugging they're aren't on, they coming back on fiverr no it was a no. twitch it was, it was just something for twitch oh was it a thing for twitch i thought mm, I, yeah i haven't heard a daft punk song in 10 years so couldn't tell you uh folks the news is here the playstation vr2 is gonna cost you more than the game it's played on game console i just want to say on. get lucky it's the song of the summer <laughs> up all night to get lucky um what is wrong with you the PlayStation you know, vr2 wait do you know that joke do you know you know the the scottish comedian lemmy he had a show for a little so. bit and now now he mostly just does Twitch, but he's really good on it. He has this tweet that he tweets about at least once a month and it's the same exact one. And it just says something like I'm calling it now. Get lucky is the song of the summer. And he just <laughs> tweets it like once a month. Uh, Every time good. I see it, I retweet it. It's so good. It's just the same <laughs> stupid statement over and over again. That's pretty good. I, you know, that's worth the tangent for it. That's not bad. It's like the We Shop Wednesdays. Uh, the... Yeah. I love it. That song. God, or the, so is good. it is it Ted Danson's birthday Twitter? Which is just... yeah. that one's pretty good. Those those like a the 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 people who copied them aren't great, but those few original like is it Friday the 13th? Mm -hmm. Is Michael Jackson dead? Was that one of them <laughs> yeah. or something? Um, no, that couldn't have been. I, ooh, you know, I have a good idea, which is that you start it like the day after. So just going along with Ted Danson's birthday, you start it like the day after Ted Danson's birthday and you just say no. And then when his birthday finally rolls around, you say no. <laughs> and, then you, and then you just like slowly have a meltdown where you're just like you like do like an apology post. And then you have like the intern come in and then somebody else come in and be like, we fired the intern and the people who coded <laughs> this. And then we're going bankrupt. We paid ten thousand dollars for this Twitter bot. And it didn't even fucking work. You know, that would be I just want I just want it to be not the famous Ted Danson's birthday. <laughs> it's so <laughs> So it's like the middle of October. It just says yes, and everyone's like, "What? It is." Oh my god, that's great. It should be. Is it a Ted Danson's birthday? <laughs> is it a Ted Danson's? <laughs> um, speaking of Ted Danson's birthday, February five hundred and forty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. You too can plug into the Matrix and not play Call of Duty ah! on your PlayStation Five. That is so much money. It's, so it's more than the console. It's more than the console. And to be clear, look, I want to be very, I want to be very, I want to be very clear. You need to be perfectly clear. This is a VR headset that plugs into the console. It is not standalone. It is tethered. It is literally just a monitor with some cameras strapped to it and some controllers. Now, I understand the tech. 
it's it's very well that the manufacturing cost could be around 500 or 550 you know they could be taking a loss on it but there's a reason why oculus sells this shit at a loss there's a reason why xbox and sony are selling their main consoles at a loss because you want to get people to get the hardware and then you make money on the software and it feels like they forgot to do that with this because it's so fucking expensive for what feels like a, I don't want to say mediocre, but like middle of the road VR headset. When the fucking MetaQuest or Ocu- Facebook Oculus Quest, I'm going to call it Oculus. I don't want to say Meta. The Oculus Quest Two, which is a fantastic headset, even at the the price change, is four hundred dollars. It's hundred and fifty dollars cheaper, and it's much better than this. This is this is crazy. Are you guys going to buy it? No, no, I don't do VR. First of all. Second of all, I don't do VR. I so I a friend of mine got the PSVR one and I liked it for what it was. Also, what was the cost of the PSVR one? I believe when it that, launched it at came four out. at four hundred, but they pretty quickly dropped it down to like you could find it on sale for like two fifty. Yeah, I I just remember it. It seemed like a pretty decent add on, like a good value, and. Um, I, I just don't know. I mean, I haven't looked into it, but like what games are launching with this thing? Like what what's going to be on it? There's like there's like uh, the big ones. I think there's a Horizon. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember on, the, the, on rails thing. Yeah, it looks like it's on rails. So it's it's just a lot of those like VR experiences. It doesn't look it doesn't have Vito VR. It doesn't have Pavlov. True. It doesn't it doesn't have the good shit that actually makes VR worth the price. So it's just like, what are they doing? It's more than the console. It's an accessory that's more than the fucking console. That's crazy. I, if, I can't believe that. That is the part yeah. I cannot believe. If 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 it was, if it was wireless, maybe I could understand. Yes. Like maybe, but the fact that it's tethered and and it's basically just an upgrade minimally i'm guessing the lenses are probably a little bit better and, and the resolutions may be higher maybe it goes uh the refresh rate is a little bit better but like that's it like the, what what sets it apart from the first one other than that i mean so so the the i think the big upgrade is the first one the tracking in stuff. order for the yeah in order for the tracking you had a playstation i camera looking at you yeah and a lot of people and a lot of people talked about problems with it basically shaking like you would be standing still and the tracking would be going fucking wild on you mm. but because this is inside out tracking which is the standard the cameras are on the headset They're so inside, it can tell yeah. where it is the tracking is much better it's not 550 dollars better though yeah um <laughs> like i look i don't i don't like facebook but if it is somebody who has dabbled in vr has a vr headset and you know enjoys the space but at the same time is a rational person by far and away, the best headset out there is the Oculus Quest 2. There's like literally no fucking competition because everything else is either tethered or it's more expensive or it doesn't have as good of a, a library. So like Meta is they are they are selling that at a loss. You should hop on that. It's got the games. It's wireless. It fucking works. It's it's really good uh, resolution quality and everything. And that's not me. That's not me hawking Oculus. That's me saying that's the by far the best thing you can get out there. And it's really good. And it's four hundred dollars start. Or you can spend another hundred and fifty dollars and have to plug it into a fucking PS5, which costs five hundred dollars on top of that. It's it's they killed this thing. They just killed this thing by putting it at that price. Yep. Yeah, I. Yeah, it's wild. Absolutely wild. I give it two to three months before they drop it down to like four fifty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So real quick, I'm just looking at the specs. The PSVR 2 screens are 5% more pixels than the Quest 2. It's like the PSVR is 2000 by 2000 and the Oculus Quest is basically 1840 by 1900. So very, very yeah. little difference. Everything else is pretty much identical, except that the Quest 2 is also it's wireless it will run the apps on the headset, but you can also very easily wireless to your PC and have it playing there and broadcasting with no problems. It's I they should have they sell this shit at a loss. That's what you got to do. The tech is expensive, just like a brand new next gen console. Ryan, sell it at a loss. 
get you out idiot. of England and start selling this at a loss. <laughs> yeah. Todd, Dear. what are you doing? Actually, you know what? I don't know that it is more expensive than the console in the US, but we didn't have the price hike. So it may be the same price as the console <laughs> elsewhere. <laughs> Buy one, get one at full price. Uh, God. Great deal. Uh, next up here in the news, uh, shout out to my boy Nibel has quit Twitter um, in a sign of solidarity. He put a nice little I... post on Patreon about it wasn't really a thing of solidarity. Uh, that he, after some introspective, he realized people weren't which isn't entirely true. People weren't coming to him for the information. They were coming to him for how quickly he got the information at, out. Um, but I also think people enjoyed him as well, uh, which yes. he failed to, I think, see. But um, well, it's, he's taking a it's, break. Yeah, like my reading of it was he spent so much time and energy in putting that account together and just like quickly delivering very like factual, relevant video game news as soon as it happened. And he's put so much time and energy into that that when and he got he, and he got a lot of attention for it as 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 he well deserved, but when he tried to turn that into his job, and put up the Patreon and the coffee and so that people could pay him to do this full time, I don't know how he was doing it without getting paid for it. He wasn't able to garner the support, and that is definitely going to cause the crisis of, I feel like I should keep doing this, but people are clearly not going to pay me for it. So then, why the fuck should I keep doing it when I'm feeling burned out? about it and and just to, to twist this a little bit like this is a perfect example of how like it ties into the whole twitter news fiasco the past couple of weeks with elon musk like this guy was driving so much fucking traffic to the site twitter should have been paying him there needs to be mm -hmm. some model for twitter to pay this guy because literally every time there was like a direct or state of play or whatever and i couldn't watch it live i was always going to nibel and being like Give me the breakdown. Give me the breakdown. Give me the screenshots. I want to see what's going on, even though I can't watch it live. That's driving so much fucking stuff to Twitter. Put ads on top of that. Twitter will make a shitload of money and they pass off some of that to Nibel. That's what they should be doing. That's their model. And when they don't do that, people are going to get burned out because they're not getting anything off of it. And then you're going to lose good content creators like this. Yeah. I think about probably 30% of the links in all of local chat are Nibel tweets. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Or at least copied from Nibel's tweets. Uh, yeah, it sucks. Uh, I think he did his job really well. I think Patreon probably wasn't the right choice. I think if he had kind of gone the Wario 64 route and was doing ads for people, I think yeah. that would have been a good route, but I can understand not yeah. maybe not wanting to compromise your journalistic integrity. Uh, but also, fuck all the people who subscribed for a month on his Patreon and then took it back. Like, I would rather you not do that and then kind of be, I don't know. People are tipping the wrong way. Uh, but, man. Goodbye, Nibel. I'll find... We'll find Wait, I'm just going to say it. I don't know how this is going to happen. I'm not going to yeah. do it. But somebody, somebody needs to go to fucking Elon Musk and be like, pay this guy. Fucking give him 100k a year. Have him do that. Build up similar things. That's how you. That's how you start to fix Twitter. Is you reward your content creators, even if it means giving them a literal job. Give them a che blue check mark for free. Um, I can't wait. I'm just gonna make another Elon Musk account. You know, and get the blue check mark. <laughs> you <laughs> then... know, honestly, I was like, I was like, who would pay for that? And then I sat there being like. I spend like hours on Twitter every day, like eight bucks a month for like a little bit more. You know, honestly, I probably should. So I think I'm going to do it. And then the joke I had was that I'm just going to pretend that I got verified and I didn't pay for it. <laughs> Even <laughs> like if you were verified, you, you have to pay you for still it. You still have to now. pay for it. Yeah. Oh, is that how it, I thought? I thought everyone it was just, has to pay for it now. Yeah. So they're going to take the check mark away. Because yeah. I I I, right. I don't know that I I didn't see that confirmed. I only saw that in the rumors of it. So like anyone, theoretically, you could go make another subpixel team and get it verified for the blue check mark. Yeah. And be yeah. like, oh, we're the official one. It's still uh, stupid. Nobody did that. But it's one of those things where I spend so much time on that platform that I'm like, if there's enough benefits in that eight dollars a month, then yeah, I'll pay. Yeah, that's for true. It. it is the only social media I use. Pretty so. much, yeah. Um, next up here in the list of top trending news, uh, a NASCAR driver recreates a wall ride from 2005 GameCube 
game to qualify for championships. This is the most incredible video I've ever seen in my life. It's cool. Um, I don't I, know. Have you guys have you guys seen the video of it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It this okay. Um, so let me just describe for for listeners at home what's going on here. Basically, there's a NASCAR driver. I think he was in tenth or eleventh place. It's the final lap. He has to get to like sixth or fifth place in order to get enough points to advance into the championship, advance into the playoffs. So his season is over unless he can go from like, let's say 10th to fifth. Um, and it's a short track. So the track total, I think, is less than a half mile long. So you're not even going top speed. You know, you accelerate and then you have to slow down and go to the inside of the turn on the oval and then accelerate out of it. And this driver was just like, what if I just kept accelerating and just like literally grinded against the outside of the wall the whole time. So instead of slowing down for the turn, I just kept the throttle down and like slingshotted around the outside of the wall. And it's just this crazy video where the first time I saw it, I thought he was crashing because there's all these cars and all of a sudden there's a car on the wall. But he literally slingshots around five or six cars, passes the guy he needs to pass to get into like fifth or sixth place right at the finish line. And it's insane. It's so fucking like wild that you're watching it. You're like, he crashed, but at the same time, he's going so much faster than everybody else. And it's okay in NASCAR rules, apparently. And the kicker, the reason why we're talking about it was because when they interviewed this driver after the race and they said, uh, how did you get the idea? Like, where did it come from? And the driver, Ross Chastain, said, quote, I played a lot of NASCAR 2005 on the GameCube, which I had growing up. You could get away with it. And I never knew if it would actually work in real life. So this guy literally just used such a cheat from a video game, a 17 year old video game to, to in real life. And it worked way better than anybody ever thought it would. Well, did he screw wild. up his car at all? Like, did like. He, the... he 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 did, but not enough to slow the car down. And it was the it was the last turn of the last lap. Mm -hmm. So like once he gets past the finish line, he like slows down and then like stops. But it didn't slow him down too much. So he, it's, oh, it's teams wild. are going to teams are going to have to build in like we got to add an extra twenty thousand dollars for car repair <laughs> yeah. when our players start their drivers yeah. start doing this. I, that, that's I the thing like... is like is like part of the problem is that NASCAR rules are so buck fucking wild because instead of like fixing problems on the track and making the race more competitive and interesting, they just add in a bunch of bullshit rules. Like like one of the things they have is if it's like a 200 lap race, instead of you race all 200 laps, they have mandatory caution periods. So you race like 50 laps and then they go, everybody slow down. Everybody slow down. Everybody catch up back to each other. You were in first place. So you get a point. OK, green flag, go again. Like they literally have like pause periods in the race to make it more competitive. So like as far as I'm aware, NASCAR is just like, yeah, go ahead. Throw your fucking car in the wall. Who fucking cares? So, yeah, that's that's the concern I have. I don't give a shit about NASCAR. But if I was a NASCAR driver, I'd be concerned about dumb fucks trying all sorts of bullshit maneuvers like this because there was no punishment or anything. And it worked. Yeah. Um. I think it's just funny he did the thing everyone ha has always done in a racing video game and thought, like, I wonder if you can do that in real life. Because yeah. I feel like half the, like, burnout games, you take a lot of corners just scraping along the side. Yeah. Um, yeah. And those guardrails. And you're always like, would it be faster? So Or, like, rocketing over. over. There's, like, a little bump on the curb, and you're just like, fuck it. And you just fly yeah, over yeah. it. <laughs> just launch yourself. Yeah. Because, I mean, how many times have you, like, had to do something with one hand, and you're just holding the the accelerator yeah. trigger and you're just going around the curves it's crazy yeah. so it's, it's incredible that crazy i'm just so happy he picked like a gamecube game because that's adorable <laughs> yeah that's that's what somebody was laughing about was like the game he played was on multiple consoles but i guess he just had it on the gamecube <laughs> yeah it's so good um what a heartwarming story for our cold cold hearts uh, next up here, uh, Bungie says there are a quote notice. But God, this Sorry. sentence doesn't make sense. Bungie <laughs> says there that. are quote noticed a <laughs> notable number of PS5 players playing the PS4 version of Destiny 2 on their current generation consoles. <laughs> this sentence is very funny. I had not read it before. <laughs> I know. Just fuck Sony. Stop fucking up. 
Yeah, literally, like, I guess Bungie puts out a weekly post where I, I had to scroll through it to get to this bit where they're just like, what? Well, here's all the patch buffs. Uh, this guy wrote on a fucking Destiny Halloween costume. This guy, Jake Terry, loves Bionicles, so he's writing a series for us now. Uh, Bionic Destiny fanfic. Oh, by the way, you PS5 players, stop playing the fucking PS4 version. <laughs> It's what insane. is this accent? I, I, I thought it was New York, accent. then it was Jersey and a little Philly. <laughs> it's everywhere. It's, it's, it's like Jersey nerd. Uh, <laughs> <What>? Jerd. Jerd. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, basically, this is something I have run into multiple times. But 99.9% .9 of the time, if you try to install or play a game, on your PS5 and there is a PS4 version of that game, like for example, Final Fantasy VII Remake, it will by fucking default install the PS4 version of the game. Even though you have a PS5 console, you're on a PS5 and there's a PS5 version, you say download or install, it will install the PS4 version. I've gotten all the way into a game before, before I realized, wait, why does this look like shit and the frame rates are bad? Oh, because it downloaded the fucking PS4 version. And I just find it so funny that Bungie, like, it, they're not saying this is a huge problem, but from their stats and metrics, they can tell that there are enough people doing this that they feel like they need to do a PSA saying, hey, by the way, PS5 players, make sure you're playing the right version. That's bad fucking UX from Sony. Yeah. Um, I was sorry, I was scrolling through this and I was just laughing at one of their before and after screenshots has, uh, like console text in it. I yeah. don't know if they noticed it or not. Uh, also in the last paragraph of the entire thing, the E was hyperlinked. So I clicked on it thinking it would be like a secret or something. And it was, it was a picture of a baby seal and it's very adorable. So I suggest everyone go yeah. read the Bungie daily news. <laughs> And check that out. <laughs> but seriously though, PSA, if you have a PS5, you should 100% check, double, triple check that you're downloading the PS5 versions or install. Even from the disc, this is a problem. So make sure you're installing the right versions. When did um, the PlayStation Plus come out, the new rollout? It's like five. It wasn't like May or June this year. That is the last time my PS5 has been turned on. <laughs> Dang. Uh, you know, I think I think I think when Stray came out in like July, I played it. Yeah, that no, was that it. was that would be it. Stray. Yeah, That's yeah. The last time I booted that thing, you're um, probably gonna turn it on for for God of War, right? Yeah, and I'm I'm gonna hit uh, Gran Turismo. Kratos in the face. No, yeah, Gran Turismo this week, and I'm gonna play. So I can get that done. Uh, Google Play Android now has uh, words, is what I'm saying. Google Play Android games now available on PC in beta. Why is... How does this rank above Microsoft says they'll keep it's, God on it's, PlayStation? It's weird. How does this rank? It's sir? weird. I said good day. You guys ever install <laughs> BlueStacks? Thank you, Will. No, because we have iPhones. <laughs> oh. Yeah. But you never even dicked around with BlueStacks, the Android emulator for PC? No. <laughs> Um, I I've done it, it a was. couple times. <laughs> it, 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 so, I mean, there's a couple of different ones of them now, but it's just it's just this whole thing of like mobile games are fucking huge, but they're kind of stuck on mobile, right? There's there's games that go cross, you know, like Diablo Immortal, Hearthstone, etc. Um, but it's just weird to see Android apps and games start to come to PC and like run natively on PC, and I don't know if I like it or not because a lot of mobile games are bad, right? Yeah. I I don't know. I don't play mobile games. Yeah, I don't care. I I want to play mobile games, but I can probably count the 4 or 5 that are good, and I've probably tried 40 or 50. It's like mobile games like, or flash games. Yes, and there are good flash games. Yes. But there's a lot of trash. But I don't tell people I play flash games. <laughs> it's just <Why> known. <laughs> let me tell you about Winnie the Pooh's home run derby. All right. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you about slap the monkey. <laughs> was, well, let me tell you about sandbox. Was that what it was? That what it Kitten was called? Cannon. Kitten Hell of cannon. Falling Sand. Well, yeah. Hell of Falling Sand was really good. Fucking yeah. So there are game. good ones. So that's why it's like it's it's weird that they're trying to meld the two when they're so different. Right. Like a mobile game. You need to be able to like pick that up and put that down. It's like 30 seconds to a minute at yeah. a time. And the control scheme 
it's just wildly different. So it's 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 kind of like, oh, cool, you're you're getting rid of the divider between these two platforms. But at the same time, like, what does that actually get me? Yeah, um, I don't I don't know if I did this or Ian did this, but I have realized that you have shoved the best news of the entire week to the very bottom. I put that in middling and someone moved it. No, someone moved it. I didn't move it. It was down there. Maybe I maybe I put so it down I there by accident. There. I thought I, I thought I put it, it I thought I put it right in the middle because I wanted to lift everyone's spirits. We uh, should talk about it now, though. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So uh, Phil Spencer says it's been too long. <laughs> that's not that's, that was a joke. Um, Dwarf Fortress Steam Edition, December sixth. Get your dicks out, everybody. Uh, yeah. They're about to get sucked. Uh, I am <laughs> so excited. Uh, to give you guys blow up. I'm <laughs> ready to. Um, I, I haven't played Dwarf Fortress since 20, 2011 or 2012. Yeah, I've never. I, pl I, no. I played it a little. It's like Tetris, Pikmin, <laughs> Dwarf Fortress. You've never played him. It's never. Like Great to reason. <laughs> uh, I'm excited for it. Um, uh, the thing with Dwarf Fortress, which I think a lot of people who can't just can't get into it, is. It is... Oh, someone explained it really well. It's... Oh, God, I gotta check the save data Discord. I'll never say those words ever again. Um, sorry, someone said it really well over here. I'm going, I'm going. Take your time. I'll delete it before you get there. Uh, yeah, yeah, if you could delete it before I get there. We're almost there. Three, two, Take one. Take your time. Zero. Um, Negative one. Negative two. It's a game Strix design for time. people whose preferred text editor is Vim. Is that what I was looking for? Uh, That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> it's basically like it, if if everything that is good about that game is better shown to you by not playing the game, uh, they have now solved that issue. Yeah, it's it's a better game to talk and be told about than it is to play. Yes, like when I click on a dwarf, it shows me every single thing about that dwarf ever on one screen that I have to scroll down through in the original Dwarf Fortress. In the new one, you click on a dwarf, it has a, a front page. You click on the tabs to look at their health, their thoughts, their relationships, the things they're carrying, like all that stuff. Before, yeah. that was just all on one screen. And yeah. I mean, not entirely, but you just had to go into sub menus and stuff. So like they have given this game, which really never had UI, a UI treatment. Uh, yeah, but you're forgetting the most important part, which is it now has graphics. It was literally yeah. an ASCII game. Yep. There were some tile sets, but you had to install them and they were still kind of tile sets. So you're looking at tiles, but you're still like, I can tell you've just replaced ASCII characters with tiles. The right. game now has graphics, which is with. Yeah. Yeah. And with the menus on top of it, um, because that was the whole thing about this game was that the game, the game has incredible dynamic lore. It has a shitload of mechanics and like how they interact with them, all these different systems and complexities. However, the game is a pain to control and the game looks like shit. And so now with the Steam Edition, it feels like they were like, hey, what if the game was OK to control and didn't look like shit? And it's like. Oh my god now. Like all those systems are now going to be much more accessible and enjoyable and I cannot wait for that. We're going to do something with it. I promise you. It's going to be real good. Yes. Uh, I'm very excited. Um Oh, I can't wait. So happy. Um and then finally Kyle, please tell me about your stories. I've been waiting all stream. Oh, you know, I've just I've been waiting for this moment. Um now Microsoft <laughs> says yes, they will keep making Call of Duty on PlayStation, so long as there is a PlayStation to ship it on, um, which kind of undercuts what Sony's been saying about them in court over in the in the European Union stuff, because uh, Sony's like, oh, no, we're going to lose out on all our stuff. Don't let them do this. No, 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 no. And Microsoft's just like, you can keep having money. Like, it's fine. Um, that's it. I mean, Phil Spencer said it. Uh, what was he speaking? To? He was on some YouTube channel. Same brain. Same brain. And, I, um... uh, yeah. I just think it's such like, oh yeah, we'll keep putting out Call of Duty's on PlayStations uh, as long as there are PlayStations. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> what it won't be much longer. Sony? This is the last <laughs> yeah. one. But it's also like, like there's two things here. Number one, there is no, there is no concrete like, there's no contract in this. He can no. change his mind the next minute. Sure. And the other, the other part is like, just think about, just think about MLB the Show, 
right? That comes out on both consoles. It's part of Game Pass. Like, just imagine of how many PlayStation copies were not sold of that game because it was on Game Pass. Sure, it's on both consoles, but if it's on Game Pass on Xbox, you know, Sony sales numbers are going to are going to crater. So it's like it's like, yeah, you know, he's he's saying this as defensive. But it also doesn't quite mean much. It's like the whole thing about how there's a rumor out there that PlayStation has a state of play ready to go, but they don't want to do it right now because it's got exclusive, exclusive first on Sony all over it. And that completely weakens their argument against the Activision acquisition. So it's like this is posturing, positioning. Um, It's good to see his head is like this and he's not like I'm going to fuck over every gamer that doesn't have an Xbox. But at the same time, this shit, this shit can change. So. Yeah, it's it's what you said. Like, if I if my friend's telling me about Call of Duty and he wants to play it with me, do I want to spend five hundred dollars plus the cost of the game, or do I want to spend five hundred dollars plus yeah. fifteen dollars for free games? Um, yeah, like it's a much better, much easier decision. Um, and then uh, Phil Spencer says uh, it's been too long since Xbox last first big party game. Uh, yes, I agree, Phil. Get on it. I, so I, I was looking around and I found this comment. Um, in the time that the PS5 and the Xbox Series X have come out, PlayStation has dropped Spider-Man Miles Morales, Ratchet and Clank, Returnal, the Demon Souls remake, Gran Turismo 7, Horizon Forbidden West, and they're about to drop God of War. Xbox has dropped Forza Horizon 5, Halo Infinite, and if you want to count it, Scorn. Which yeah. is a time, it's a timed release. It's not even a exclusive so well, it has the juice it's got the juice i just i don't know i i think yeah. that's notable i think that's very notable and yeah, ups- grounded doesn't count but, uh, they wrote it here but yeah why doesn't grounded count because it came out two years ago well early access but... yeah game preview I don't know, but I think I think part of it is also the revenue numbers for Xbox came out recently and they're still making a shitload of money and and Game Pass is profitable now. So it's one of those things where they're like, you know what? I would love to have a first party game, but at the same time, we don't need to because we've got the whole fucking ecosystem. I mean, and they they do more. They do more double A stuff like like you mentioned grounded, but like Ori or um, State of Decay, I think was listed but they yeah. just don't they don't do the aside from Halo Infinite they don't really do the the huge massive budget like multi single player kind of stuff or at least they haven't maybe they're working on something but i don't yeah, know and, i just thought that that was that was interesting to see it laid out like that and i know this article isn't written this way but the way this thing makes me feel is like oh i would love to play a first party xbox game like i want to play the new fable i want to play the new obsidian stuff like it's less about like, oh, they're not putting as many about as Sony. But like, if I was a huge Sony person, I'd be like, oh, I get all these great franchises. Like, it's more of me wanting to play their first party games, not mad that they're not like financially yeah. putting them out fast enough, yeah. you know, um, which is not what this article's about. No. I just made me think about that. It's also like, Anyways. like, because of Game Pass and because of PlayStation Plus, like having those big budget exclusive titles on your console it doesn't matter as much anymore because it's not like oh. you're sitting there with a brand new console twiddling your thumbs going, give me something to play. You got yeah. that compat. You got, you got the subscription services. You always have dozens and dozens of good games to play. Yeah. I just feel it's, like it's more of like the longing for the franchises that only yeah. first party people are it, making. Yeah. It's a competition of like ideologies. Like it feels like PlayStation is still yeah. embedded very much in that single player. Like this is going to be a big hit. And Microsoft is like, Pay us for free games, basically, <laughs> like for, yeah. for basically free games. And they're making money hand over fist. Like, it's crazy. But I know Jake's taking full advantage of it. Yeah. Keeps recommending games. And then I look at that. I'm like, oh, I should play that game. He's like, a, <laughs> a, 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 it's like you see your, uh, your, you drive past your church, but he's the pastor who comes out and tries to get you to come in on Sunday. You're like, this isn't a real thing. I'm making this up. This is this from your childhood? No, I'm just saying, in New Jersey, you got to keep your doors locked. They pop out. You find Jesus? Maybe, maybe yeah, North pastors. Jersey. North Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm going to... Oh, I almost hit the, the Go Not Live button. Go Not Live. Hey, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. Kyle and I almost called you. But I, uh, Ian, it's good timing. Thank you for being here. I gotta leave. I gotta go to work. <laughs> okay, have fun at work. 
Bye. Uh, bye. And folks, thank you so much for tuning in this week. Uh, this is uh, local chat, subpixelfilms.com, bringing us straight to our link tree where you too can buy merch that is ours. Um, thank you so much for everyone that tuned in tonight. Kyle, thank you so much for being here. Ian, I you're gone, so I don't have to say anything nice about you. Um, let's see. This weekend, I don't know who's streaming. I think Ian's streaming. Someone's streaming. It's not me. So look out not for me. that. Um, Kyle, I enjoyed our Father's Day stream. Folks, go watch the Father's yeah. Day stream. It was fun. Uh, oh, I should export it to YouTube. Now that I'm thinking about it. Oh, I uh, should do that because I was streaming. Oh, yeah, I guess you should do it then. <laughs> um, but you can check it out on Twitch VOD. Go check out the Father's Day stream. It was super fun. That game was creepy. But like I said, it, like, it was the jump scares were creepy. None of the like creepiness of it carried out of that, yeah. which I found nice. Yeah. Um, so. And it was intriguing. Just it was like, it was like, I want to know what's going right. on. It was like an interesting uh, storyline. Yes. Nice. Folks, thank you so much. Um... I think that's it. I'm just waiting for the music to finish because it's just we gotta, crisper when the music finishes. You it know? is. We, we got to, um, I think we have to do Poppy's Playtime number two whenever it comes out, hopefully oh, in 2023. Yes. We definitely need to do that next October. Yes. And we will do that all, not next week.